So let's begin to go a little deeper into how we allocate or how we charge overhead to the jobs. And we're going to use something called a predetermined overhead rate. We charge overhead to jobs based on some overhead rate that we predetermine. That's what it means. So manufacturing al uh, overhead is typically allocated to jobs on the basis of something. It could be the amount of direct labor hours that a job has. It could be the direct labor cost the job has. Or it could be machine hours. I'm just giving you an example of some. This, any of these are called the allocation base. So if we find that large jobs require more hours and small jobs require fewer hours, we would use direct labor hours to say, well, every labor hour a job incurs gets a certain amount of that overhead. That would be the rate, the overhead rate, and we'll predetermine it this way. Step one, let us estimate our annual manufacturing overhead costs. So before the year begins, we're going to sit down and we're going to estimate how much do we think manufacturing overhead is going to run this year based on the projects that we want to do, based on past experience, etc. What do we estimate? Step number two, let's estimate our total allocation base, whatever it happens to be. So if it's direct labor hours, how many hours are we going to pay for this year? How many hours are we going to employ? Or how much money is it going to cost us for all our labor? Or how many machine hours are our machines going to run? And we divide our estimated annual cost by that allocation base, and we'll come up with a predetermined overhead rate. It might be $7. That means we'll charge for every job that we use direct labor hours for. Every direct labor hour will also be charged another $7 of overhead. If it's dollar, uh, direct labor dollars, for every dollar, there might be 110% uh, of that cost is overhead. That's in percentages. If it's machine hours, it's per machine hour, etc. Notice that these are estimates, not actuals. They're estimates at the beginning of the year. So we're estimating. That's all we're doing. Step number two. We take this predetermined overhead rate that we got by estimates, and we multiply it by the actual amount of hours or dollars or machine hours that we incur on a job. So if job one incurs 15 hours, and we have a predetermined overhead rate of 12 bucks, we multiply 15 by 12, and that's what we apply to that job. So we multiply the predetermined overhead rate by what we actually experience for the job, and that is the amount of overhead we apply to that job. This, by the way, is referred to as a normal cost system. And this is the most widely used costing system in manufacturing facilities is allocation of overhead based on some predetermined overhead rate. So let's uh, give a quick example here. So let's say at the beginning of the year, we sat down and we estimated. Remember, estimates, step one is all estimates. We estimated our manufacturing overhead to be 320000 By the way, once you're done with step one, once you have the predetermined overhead rate, you can ignore these estimates. In fact, cross them out. You no longer need them. And let's say we estimate our direct labor hours to be 40000 That's what we think we're going to incur during the year. So our predetermined overhead rate is our total costs divided by our total activity base, our allocation base. We'll get $8 per direct labor hour. So every job that has direct labor hours, for every direct labor hour, we're going to charge another 8 bucks to cover all that overhead. So job XYZ uses 15 hours. So, what do we charge it for overhead? The applied, now, this is not actual, this is just applied, the applied manufacturing overhead is 15 bucks per, uh, uh, sorry, 15 hours times our $8, I put the dollar sign on the wrong thing, you'll notice, is $120. And that goes to the job cost sheet. And that should say 15 hours times 8 bucks instead of 15 bucks times 8 hours. Make that change, please. So, well, that's simple enough, isn't it? So let me clear up some issues first. There, are some, there might be some confusion as to, well, why do we use estimates? They're only estimates. Why not wait for the real thing? Why not use actual costs incurred? Remember, these are non-traceable costs, number one. Number one, you can't use them because they're non-traceable, but... 
Let's just look at a one-year timeline. Here's the beginning of the year. Here's the end of the year. At uh, the beginning of the year, we calculate our predetermined overhead rate. Uh, and, as I said, they are based on estimates. At the beginning of the year, we estimate our costs, we estimate our allocation base, and we determine our predetermined overhead rate that we charge to jobs. At the end of the year, we will know what our actual costs were. We won't have to estimate. At the end of the year, we know what they are. So why not wait till the end of the year and get an actual number and apply that to all the jobs we did? Why not wait for the real thing? Well, here's the big problem. Let's say that we start a job here. Job 1, uh, beginning. And let's say we end job 1 here and ship it to the customer. Well, how much do we charge for manufacturing overhead? If we wait till the end of the year, all the way to the end of the year, to get a rate, well, you can't wait. You can't say to the customer, here's the job, but by the way, uh, the billing is incomplete. You've got to wait till the end of the year so we know how much manufacturing overhead to charge you. We can't do that. That is why we apply to every job during the course of the year so that we have some estimate, some very good estimate as to what it actually will be. Now, it may not be exact, but it's going to be better than telling the customer, you got to wait a year, right? You can't do that. Well, somebody may say, well, you don't have to wait a year. You'll know what your, what your actual costs are more frequently than that. So why don't you do it quarterly? Why don't you figure out every quarter what your predetermined overhead rate is? Calculate the actual, don't, don't do a predetermined on estimates, calculate an actual rate more frequently. And then just do it that way. So this way here, uh, you could even do it weekly or monthly. Why not do it that way? So let's say we do one at Q1, one at Q2, one at Q3, one at Q4. And we'll calculate it that way. That makes a lot more sense. Well, let's look at a particular cost. Let's look at heating costs. Here's January up here. And we go into the summer months. And then we go into the fall. And we end with December. So there's our heating cost. Well, what happens? Quarter 1 has huge manufacturing overhead costs for heating. But Q2 and Q3, especially Q3, has the lowest heating costs. So we end up with the conclusion that, hey, you know what? To be cost competitive, it's cheaper to make units in the summer. So let's not make units in the winter. Let's make them in the summer. We'll have cheaper costs. Meanwhile, you're still paying that heating cost, right? So you need a cost over the course of the year to reflect the costs for the entire year, not just per quarter, because you may have seasonal fluctuations in your costs that would then skew your interpretation of your costs, saying, why is it so expensive to produce these units in January and February, but it's really cheap in July and August? Well, it's because you have seasonal costs, especially if you're in a northern climate, right? If you're in a southern climate, your utility bills shoot up in the summer because, oh, it's hot. I lived in Florida for a summer. I'll never do that again. That was hot. So here's another issue. Let's recall our capital structure. Remember we did an example where we had high fixed costs and low variable costs versus a scenario where we had low fixed costs and high uh, variable costs. Well, with high fixed costs and low variable costs, using direct labor hours or direct uh, uh, labor um, dollars may not be a good cost driver. Because you have high fixed costs, which means you're using more machinery to produce your output, using labor as a cost driver may not be appropriate. So you have to think about your allocation base and ask yourself, is direct labor hour truly a good cost driver? If you opt for low fixed costs and high variable costs, in other words, more labor than capital, machine hours may not be a good cost driver. So you have to pay attention to what your cost driver is and make sure that you're choosing one that's suitable for the capital structure that you have.